Thanks for logging on to House of Chappelle TV. I am Rico Chappelle, CEO of the legendary House of Chappelle. In the past 20 years, I've been traveling all over the world with my clients such as Tony Braxton, Candy Bird, Kelly Rowland, and a list of celebrities that I can't even count. And now I'm about to share the secret with you on a web series I call So Like a Pro. Each week I'll teach you a tutorial on a step-by-step -step rule of how I make anything from a fabulous evening gown to home decor and furnishings. All on a dime. This is So Like a Pro. Thanks for logging on to House of Chappelle TV. I am your host, Rico Chappelle, and you just tune in to another episode of So Like a Pro. And today I have the fabulous Jaylon from Chasing Atlanta. He ain't new to this, but he true to this, but he's a baby of all of my guests members. He's the youngest. Hello, everyone. This is Jaylon Aaron, of course, from Chasing Atlanta, and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, thank you, thank Rico. you. So let's get on to the real dirt. What happened season two? Chasing Atlanta is a YouTube series uh, that's based out of Atlanta, of course, and it's about young gay guys moving to Atlanta to, to chase their dream or whatever it is. Jalen is from Alabama. He was a hairdresser and he sells hair now. I'm gonna oh. tell you, I was a fan and so I seen that fight. Oh, them jumping on you. I was like, oh no, bitch. Why you want to jump on me? Because I mean. you talk a lot of shit, but. No, I talk real shit. But you talk real shit though, so I got it. I talk real shit. You didn't bother me. I think you bother those that don't too much have anything. I became a fan of Jalen's because he was just simply telling like it is and every move he made was a strategic business move. And I tell people when any industry that you are in, business is number one key. And I respect it and admire that about him. One of the things that I did love about the show, because people always say that you really like the show. I'm like, y'all can't discredit them kids because they're trying something new. Um, and now everybody's trying to copy off y'all. And I was like, it's hot, it's new, it's fresh. And to have a concept where the kids are coming to Atlanta to work out their dreams. And that's what I did 15 years ago. So I was y'all 15 years ago, moving to Atlanta, trying to make it big, chasing these celebrities. Because I saw myself in a, except the guy that the power cut off. <laughs> I mean, the gas cut off. I didn't see myself in here. But I saw myself in Lyric. I saw myself in you. I saw myself in so many of the characters. But season two, when you elevated, a lot of the cast members didn't elevate. So Season one, what people don't know is that when I was there from the very beginning, mm -hmm. from all of the meetings, and I actually helped them create the name of Chasing Atlanta. Okay. Right. So, so like, you, you was NeNe Leakes. Pretty much. Right, right, right. But I didn't come on the show to fake anything or anything like right. that way before Chasing Atlanta. I was who I was. Right, being exactly. In the hair industry, doing hair, selling hair, and just different things like that. So, season two, I was like, I want to actually show people this time, because season one, they didn't really let us show us right. what we really, really do. Right, it was right. More so, like, they took the catfish. Catfish situation and ran with it. Right, right, so right. Two, well, you know, that's what they, they job is to, to... Well, it is. So I made it my job season two. I said, I want to show people a different side of me. Mm -hmm. I want to actually, Which you did. I want to help the rest of the cast members. Like, baby, well, you tried. Well, I really, really tried. And even when it came down to my event, nobody told them that I spent $1,000 on my marketing consultant to come here to talk to them. When you're dealing with a lot of the girls in Atlanta, I don't care what you do, honey, and how much money you make and how successful you're going to become, they're always going to be haters. And it's always going to be uh, someone sitting on the sidelines critiquing you. When you're at your best, they're going to try to critique you at your... Mm -hmm. It can be that one little thing. You can be flawless, but you may have one little piece of hair sticking out. Oh, that bitch hair, mm -hmm. and so-and-so, so-and-so. And I feel like that's what they all did. Yeah. And I feel like they watch me all the time. I see them on my Insta stuff, and I see a lot of them watching my every move, and it's like, you cannot get on the show and say, I don't do the shit that I say I'm doing on the show. Exactly, like, exactly. said it, and one person in particular, it was just like, one minute you was trying to be my friend. Who was that? Tell me in my ear. Oh, I'm not. Oh, I'm not. Oh, I, no, I don't, I don't want to say his name, but go ahead. But I feel like you But did came you see his show. Jack profile picture, though? Oh, my God. 
<laughs> okay, this is juicy. Hold on. We got to start sewing. Okay. Okay. So we are making a full circle skirt. So the materials that we're using is this satin, of course. We're using horsehair braiding for the oh, hemline. I do not know how to sew. Oh, well, I'm going to hook you up. It's almost like you sewing like a wig on like a 27 piece. I know in Alabama and Ooh. they still be rocking them damn 27, 27 pieces piece. with the blonde highlights. Uh, we got an invisible zipper. Or of course, we have some scissors. And I picked up some uh, right-handed scissors this time. We got some thread. Um, of course, I'm using purple because it's a little shade off so you can see the stitching. Um, we got hook and knives, we got pins, of course, we got a hand needle, we got measuring tape, and we have interfacing. This is a little bit more advanced than most of our guests is on the show, but I think you can handle it like you handled yourself on television. So are you going back season three, or will that be a season three? Because I know they started Dallas. They, I think they started franchising a little bit too early because they need to put more money into Atlanta show and not having rooms to go furniture in the reunion set and have it more polished up. They actually are doing season three. Okay, that's good. That's but good. I told them the only way I will come back is they have guidelines, and I have to set those guidelines because I would not continue to be on the show. I think you should because you are what Chasing Atlanta is about, regardless of like all them, like that guy, the little, the little funny dark skin one that the cook with the gas. The, uh, the gas was off. Oh, hey, hey, Devon. Devon, that's his name. Mm -hmm. um, he was funny as hell. Once I got to know him more outside of the show, mm -hmm. I'm like, he really could be what Chase Lamb needs to. The show He's that, funny as hell. Like, he does. He do know how to cook. It's to show people like your everyday struggles, but you have to know what you get yourself into. So what we're going to do now, we're going to do a waistband. Yes, I remember my, my waist was this skinny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's at a 28 and a motherfucking half. Get okay. the fuck out. Get the fuck out. I need to get to a 26. Okay, girl. Well, just go ahead and kill yourself. Okay, so we're going to do, since his waist is at a 26 and a half, we're going to cut a 30 waistband out. Okay? So, um, we're going to work the waistband about four inches. So, how do your, um, I know you had your father on the show, which I thought was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, y'all had some... Some points in the show, like your daddy being on there and just being, because my dad is my best friend. Mm -hmm. So my dad would have been fighting all them on the show, but for real. <laughs> yeah, um, my daddy, he was pissed at some of the stuff that he was like, I don't want to watch season two. And, and I'm like, dude, are these people not realizing that Jalen is really kind of setting a precedence that a lot of people, like your family loves you and your father is there and all that good stuff, and they're not highlighting, you don't have, you don't have to highlight all the type of drama and mess mm -hmm. and shadiness. If you highlight that situation and the relationship between you and your father, I thought that was absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. It's like this. I was, I'm like, I want to give y'all my real life. I right. Give y'all what TV, what, what a TV network would say. Give us if they was, you know what I'm saying? They want to uh, the show. Exactly. They want drama, but they also want real stories. They want people's individual lives, things that go on. Right, right. All the time. And the thing is, um, the guy that came in to give all your facts about the. Um, your business mm -hmm. and this. The shit that he was like pulling up. First of all, I was in 10th grade when he tried to pull up one of those licenses. And, like, and, well, but who has, a, who has a business <laughs> license in, a, in the 10th grade? Because I know I didn't. I was... Then, my thing is they tried to pull up an LLC. Um, I had just opened up my store in March. So right. I had to get an LLC for that. Yeah. Every business does not have to have an LLC. You and only it, get an LLC. And the, when you have, you know what I'm saying, most of the people working for you and different things. Right. So what I'm going to go ahead and have you do is just go ahead and cut the interfacing out for your waistband. So you got all on this hair and these heels. Where your damn nails at? Because if you're going to do it, you go all the way. <laughs> so I'm actually terrible with nails. Okay. I'm like, but it looks like you cut really, grass and, and really tune up cars and shit with them hands. <laughs> Honestly. Okay, so what for interfacing does, it stiffens the waistband. It's almost like a little corset around your waist. A lot of people can't take because he really is telling the truth. You be a little abrasive, though, bitch. I try to speak real stuff, and I try to be myself. Right, yeah. A lot of people don't know, like, all of this, like, going on the show and stuff like that, it really helped me to, like, I used to be really, really shy. My first impression of Jalen, I mean, I saw him on the YouTube with the heels, the hair, the makeup, so I wasn't shocked. I try not to judge people. I just try to let people kind of reveal themselves. Okay. People don't know it, but 
like I want to do more reality shows. So that was like a step of song, like for me to be able to break out, right? Feel for it. So most of the times it's like I was trying to say something, but it probably came out the wrong way. Yeah, it came out very. <laughs> but I used to be that guy, <laughs> baby. When I tell you, I used to let people have it and they go home crying. I didn't even know. I'd be like, well, what did I say? It was just a cool situation. Hey, going, what's going on? Shake hands. Kind of let's get this taping on. We just going to meet and we're going to get to know each other while we're taping. And it turned out to be fun. So we're putting this interfacing on and I'm going ahead and folding the waistband. And you can see just how stiff it becomes. So I need this to like pull this weight. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it would snatch you all the way in. You know, I got this 40 year old stomach, honey, and she ain't being snatched in. Okay. So we got the waistband. Let me squeeze on around so here. So we're talking about Jalen. So what do you have on on the coming up? Next? Um, well, so this is Sewing Like a Pro. I got a show that is airing out of Canada. Canada. Um, to be honest, I don't want to do reality television in that capacity. Um, no more. I just don't see myself going into my 40s fighting with the kids. And we know how, how people can be. Okay, so what we're doing now, we're going to take the circle part of the, um, going to make a circle. So what makes you come up with the circle skirt? Because I was like, okay, I want to put you in something that you can wear. And I, you always um, dressing like a little 16-year-old slut. <laughs> so I want to... No. Classing you up a little bit, okay? Oh and give you something flirty, okay? So 16-year-old slut is cute, but you don't have to be form-fitting and tight and tight and stuff. And you walking around here with no hips and shit. So pretty much I am cutting out a circle. Cutting a circle. And I do a lot of stuff freehand, as you see. And so what I'm going to do... Now, since I've cut out one, but it's going to be fairly short. You know, we're going to give you a little flirty situation. Okay. No, so I'm going to have you cut out this second circle. <laughs> Honey, y'all going to put you to work. I don't want you to sweat out your lace front, though, okay? I don't think it was a lot of shade thrown with me and Jalen. I think it was just a disconnect on, first of all, I'm probably about 15 years older than him. So it may seem like a lot of shade, and I gave him you know, a lot of advice about the show and, and, and about the characters on the show attacking him. I don't think it was necessarily Shay. I think it was just more of a disconnect of age, that's all. What's next for you? Well, I'm finishing up my book tour right now, so I'm going to finish this city. Okay, um, okay, what city, city are you on? Oh, that's cute. <laughs> so I won't be done. See, I'm, see, that's what I'm, how old are you? 23. That's, baby, that's what I'm talking about. 23, I was still trying to figure out who the hell I was and dealing with little girls. <laughs> Okay, go ahead and cut out this circle. Oh, you left-handed. Yes, go ahead and use the left-hand shears. Everybody been getting on me about having no, left-handed scissors. I, I need to work. Oh, okay. Well, these are, these are cheap ones. See, but I feel like chasing Atlanta, they went, like, they went about it the wrong way. They should really get people like you. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. There's different people in the No, I get what you're saying. And that will really and a cuter cast, but go ahead. That too. <laughs> you can see it on billboard. Right, right, yeah. I thought Lyric would bring a lot to the show, but Lyric old as fuck. Like, Lyric should be doing something with me. Like, no shade. Okay, so what we're gonna do with one of the circles is cut it in half because it's gonna be the sides of the skirt. So I'm doing the bottom one that you cut out, and it's gonna be the right back side and the left back side. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to cut the first circle. We're going to open it. And so we're going to attach. You open it like this. So I couldn't get out of my, I can't get out of my head, honey. The spaghetti dinner. What was going on? Because I just laugh every time I hear that. It sounds some shit like we was in college. <laughs> spaghetti dinner is what we had when we was in college. And we invite, invite everybody over for spaghetti dinners. You know, you have your spaghetti dinner and your salad. And he just kept saying spaghetti dinner, spaghetti dinner, spaghetti dinner on the show. And that's what just kept repeating in my head when we was in a project and be like, baby, we, do, we doing a spaghetti dinner. I just got them stamps, bitch. What's up? <laughs> I was just trying to... Give people, I want to say a job. I just want them to showcase what they do. Right. Like, so people can stop asking me. I right, right. Because low-key, 
they would dog you out, but then turn around and be like, how you do it? Right. right. But it was about networking for Jalen. I got it, the spaghetti dinner. And I think as he grow, that spaghetti dinner is going to turn into steak and caviar and, and lamb chops and all that good stuff. But, you know, at his age, I get it. Spaghetti dinner. Okay, so what I'm doing now, I'm sewing this seam, so I'm showing you one. We're three-fourths. We're pretty much following this line right here. And this fabric is really thick, and this skirt is going to be really, really full. Okay, so I did that, and now I want you to do this side. So I'm putting the foot down for you. Going to put them glitter boots to uh, work. You're doing good. <laughs> Okay, cool. So we've gotten the two sides done. You did a great job. So what we're going to do, we're going to flatten the seams now. And so you flatten in the inside and you come and you do the outside. So did you ever clear up like the reviews and all that good stuff on um, from online? Cause I haven't actually yet. Okay. I'm actually going to do, I want to do a spill too with Jalen. Okay. Um, on YouTube. But what I can say about this situation was that when I very first started selling here, like when all the reviews started happening, mm -hmm. like that, that was my first time actually making a big purchase from the vendor. I didn't know much about selling hair and stuff. I right. just like, oh, I'm, I do hair, so I might as well sell hair. Right, right, so right, I right. I the hair out from a particular vendor. Mm -hmm. I remember, I remember seen that somewhere. Did you do a video on it or you I said something about it? about it? Okay, yeah, I've seen it somewhere. I purchased like $10,000 mm -hmm. worth, right? Right. I'm uh -uh, sorry. You fine. And they sent me some good samples I used for the photo shoot. No, that's what they would do. The models was like, oh, we love the hair. I mean, so many people did not have an issue with it. But some people did. So, it kind of messed me up then with PayPal. You know how PayPal, if you ever use PayPal, uh -huh. you don't your money up, people start doing disputes, mm -hmm. people get problems. I don't use PayPal. PayPal. <laughs> right. So, it's like, a lot of that messed me up because, for one, I never was trying to scam somebody. But if PayPal lock your money up, there's nothing I can do. I can't give it back, and yep. I can't go get your product. Right, right, right. So that's pretty much what it was, and I never was able. I wasn't. So, I, I'm not gonna say I wasn't able to tell my story, but it was just something I kind of like looked past. Because unfortunately, a lot of people that watch those shows, they don't think above what they see on television. Nine times out of 10, the percentage of the people that do bad reviews is little to none, right? Mm -hmm. You need to reach out to your customers that always buy from you mm -hmm. and have them do a review on you. It's, because what's so crazy is people that say, let's talk on YouTube, so they say, oh, bad things. Am I, am I, am I telling the truth, sister over there? <laughs> Miss Barbie, yeah. I can get the same Miss BB, Big Barbie. Around that time, they say, "Oh, I didn't had your hair in for three years, and I still love the hair." Oh, three years! Literally, like, is that sanitary? No, you can keep the hair for a really long time. It depends on how really? you take care of it. Now, I'm not saying that they keep it in your head for that long. Okay, because I'm. But like I, this hair here, I didn't have for like a year. Let me smell it. Oh, don't it smell good? Okay, it smells it like some <laughs> old uh, Pantene. <laughs> some Pantene, some uh, VO5. <laughs> so what I'm doing, I'm gathering the skirt. So I'm just showing you. So um, I'm pretty much gathering and pushing all the fabric up into the foot. And I want you, when I get towards the end, I'm going to let you do a little bit. Because like I said, this may be a little bit out of your lead. Yeah. But this is cute. Yeah, it's going to be real cute. Yeah. But yeah, so I will tell you, you know, your clients that that have had a great experience, you have them write uh, good reviews because I'm gonna tell you, I've had some bad reviews too. And um, but baby, what I do is tell my good clients, and I be like, girl, I'm gonna go ahead and give you 20% off your next purchase, and I need you to go and write a review, whether good or bad. And what you always should do is respond to good and bad reviews. Being on Instagram and having followers stuff like it kind of makes it hard because people think you can't make no mistakes. Mm -hmm. They feel like everything. We is make a lot of mistakes. Right. We're human too. And I just try to tell people that all the time, even for the people that was on my show, like I'm not the perfect person, but the way that I come up, I'm very proud of the accomplishments that I have. I, I and, I and that's what. I was 19 years old. And that's a good or a bad. Why I was like, I like that motherfucker. I say keep doing your thing, honey. Because the children, regardless if you're doing good or bad, they're gonna talk. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, get them big old knuckles over there. You used to be the thump champion back in Alabama, right? No. <laughs> go ahead and bunch it all up and then just move it on up. Move it. Mm-hmm. 
Jalen's style is very androgynous. I would kind of put like him and Derek J in the same box and kind of shake them up. But I would say Jalen give a more of a higher, ed high fashion, edgier look. Like, like take your fingers mm -hmm. and gather it on up and then press, press the, um, there you go, just like that. Yes, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, move, oh, move, child, move, child, so you fuck up my goddamn skirt. I'm gonna go back through it and tighten it up a little bit more. Jalen would be like your Versace or McQueen, and, and Derek J would be your like Celine. They're two different, they're great brands, but just two different styles. Neither is better than the other. So we pretty much got, isn't that fucking fucking cute? Bam. Okay. So we got that laid out. Hand me that waistband. Well, honey, we finna pin her together. So I'm gonna be sewing this to the waistband. So do you keep that in the same line too? Mm-hmm. It's gonna be like right above. And keep that lined up with that. Pull that up. And you wanna be on the left side of your stitch of this stitch right here. One of the things that I say about the, the, the guys on uh, Chasing Atlanta, like they need their own original music. Like when they use music snips from other artists, that pretty much X's out their monetization, mm -hmm. you know. They need to let me go ahead and make them a song real quick. Yeah, so I'm like, like. See, nobody would wanna give me my props that I made the fucking show this season. Yeah, okay. No, you do, you do. <laughs> like, like, I will, like, I'm gonna be honest. I, I would for advertisement for the show. I did so much. And I would keep like, I you offer. and Dylan and throw everybody else away. Because regardless, Dylan is cute. He's funny and all that good stuff. When he said his gas got cut off, <laughs> bitch, I said, bitch. <laughs> I remember I was sitting on my apartment in my first apartment in Atlanta on 12th Street. And I had a rack of clothing um, feathers and rhinestones and all types of stuff. I needed to pay uh, my light bill. It was about to get cut off. Um, I said, you know what? I got all these clothes and I was like, nobody's buying this shit. Let's have a sale, sell this and move on to the next. I didn't even know that they had put out like, Baby, oh that, but, but that was a real moment. But that shit happens at 20 something years old. Mm -hmm. Speed it up a couple of years later, I hired a publicist which I end up firing. I'm sorry, Kelly girl, but I had to fire you, girl. She told me, she said, Rico, you know, women, four-figure four women are being celebrated. They're going to be celebrated in years to come, which years to come is now. You need to do something with stretch. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not doing that, not doing that, not doing that. Um, a client came in, was like, I want a, just a simple dress but I needed to come past the knee and I wanted to show my body. I made that dress and it changed my life. And that's how the stretch piece was born. And I made a lot of money and still making a lot of money off of it. So um, Derek was on the show earlier. Okay, the question is, do y'all really have talent or are y'all using the hair and the makeup and heels for gimmicks? Because it's so many of y'all. And then back in the day, it was only a couple of. But now it's like y'all coming in from Chattanooga, Nashville, Birmingham, <laughs> Minnesota and shit on truckloads with, with makeup bags and, and, and uh, Fashion Nova fits on. So what do you think about that? Well, I don't want to talk about Oh, you, you better go ahead. You had media training, bitch. Oh, that was good. That was a good answer. <laughs> that, that was a good ass answer. That was a good ass answer. Okay, <laughs> right. That was a good I answer. Know, I can always go for me. Like, for me, I never really thought that I would be wearing hair, makeup, heels, stuff like right, that. Right, because you like a real dude. Yeah, like, Cause, I'm cause yo, let, girl. Baby, do y'all see these knuckles? <laughs> baby, he got them. <laughs> he got them big old knuckles. <laughs> I've always been into heels. I've always, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. my, my mom and stuff like that. Like, when I was younger, I used to, like, put on her shoes. And stuff. Right, right. So that's something I was Who always did? into. But, you know, like, when you're at a place like Birmingham and stuff like that, it's kind of like, it's not really accepted there. It's like when I um, moved here, I just got more comfortable with me selling hair and stuff. I was like, you know what? Let me see how, if I started wearing hair, how that would potentially help my brand. Right. So it, it, really so it really did, right. My brand because it's my... Okay, wow, he's a guy. He looks amazing when he wears hair. So since I make dresses, should I start? <laughs>
What's your thing? Start wearing them. So we're putting an invisible zipper in. Okay. And we just have two more steps. Once I put the zipper in, we're hemming and we're done. Do you think you can make waist training? Um, I'm sure I can, but I will tell you this. I want to actually start like a waist training line. So I think okay. You know, I would say only just do something new um, because I think Prima Donna has kind of played it out. And, you know, and it's just no shade to Prima Donna or anything like that. Because I feel like a lot of these girls selling waist trainers and carry on and, you know, and they really have had major work done. That's bamboozing the kids. Like, you know, it's just no shade to them girls. I just be like, hmm, but they're making a lot of coinage out the deal so you but why can't do, why do you feel like they don't say hey i had life up but this is what i use to maintain my life because me i'm not afraid to say, to say that i had life up. oh yeah life up what the I won't raise you. what they, what what they suck out of you i have a little pudge here oh so you trying to say i need some life <laughs> over it <bitch. laughs> no you trying to say it was probably about your side right? oh <laughs> baby the children be loving this time behind it <laughs> so what we're going to do i don't know if we have enough but we're going to hem it with horse hair braiding. And um, it helps just keep the volume and the richness of a gown or a, a gar garment or hemline. Okay, and it takes forever. Well, I think a lot of people got to realize when you're making any garment, your fabric is like the most important thing. Like if you want a skirt to be that amazing and that full, you can't buy no cheap cotton. That's not going to work, baby girl. No. You got to spend some money on a nice, luxurious. It's going to take us forever to hem this dress. <laughs> and I don't even think we're going to have enough hem tape. Yeah, we ain't going to have enough. So we're going to do what we can. So now what I'm doing, I'm pretty much hemming the, um, the hem tape down. Okay. And we're going to press, and it's only half of the skirt that's going to be him. But, you know, I do wish you guys the best. And the producers, I hope they get their act together and, and just really upgrade it. I, and so what you want to do is pretty much make the horsehair braiding tight on a hemline. So I'm pushing it over using both hands. And you have to move really, really fast because, of, of course, I got the machine on full speed. And so now I got to tell you how you have, this is how you should have handled Gardini at the reunion. Ignored. And you know, what's so crazy? The more and more I think about it, it's like, I should have. I would have, I would have attacked I his just, age. I would say, girl, you 50. I think I was just <laughs> so fed up because what kept playing in my head is. Because like, he took time to Google you. Yeah, like you took so much And everybody in your family. To do that. Like, you're trying to come here and say something about every, every um, artist or somebody, they have a stage name. Right. So you were trying to make it seem like I lied about my name because my, I was like, you're doing the absolute most. Every, everybody asks me, is my real name Rico Chappelle? It is my real name. It is on my birth certificate. It's Rico Antonio Chappelle, actually. But you, also, you see how you didn't use Rico Antonio? Right, you right, right. You trying to make it seem like you lied because you didn't use Rico Antonio. I'm like, you're crazy. Fabric. This fabric is actually a satin taffeta, which is a little more expensive. It has a lot more volume. And it kind of gives you that whole g great weight and great body when you manipulating it and putting it through the sewing machine. We are going to press this down and let you try this skirt on for these people and be done. Let me do a little pressing. Now we're pressing the hemline to have a so crisp So what edge. type of event would you wear this? Oh, you know, I would wear this to Walmart. I would wear this to Benny Hanna's. This is not formal. It's not, it's not even after five. This is one of them statement pieces, the premiere. And like I said, you give very, you're giving me like very 16 year old slut. You know, I want you to give very 16 year old classy woman. Come on over here so we can try this on you. And don't judge me, only half of it is him, but you'll get the, I never seen a skirt like, have I seen them before? Yes, but I haven't seen them that full. Like when, when my company makes the skirts, we like to make them full, very fun and very flirty. Go ahead and step in and turn to the front. Yes, pull your hair. You've done this before. Okay. And baby, she ain't even done all the way and she is everything. Come on, stand back here a little bit. So probably to buy it probably would be like $300 retail, two, $300 just to pin. To make it, you probably spend maybe about $30, $40 to make it. 
Yes, amazing. Boom. You like? Okay, so maybe, um, girl, don't turn around because we ain't all, we ain't do all the him. We ain't do all the him yet. So, you know, we good, though. We good. And pretty much, this really just cost me about $30 to do. And those of you guys are starting your own business, you can charge $300 easily for this skirt. Thanks for logging on to House of Chappelle TV. And you just witnessed another episode of So Like a Pro with Rico and my guest this week, Miss, Je Miss or Mr.? <laughs> Or Mrs. or Miss. Whatever. I really don't care. Okay, I'm well, gonna... Mr. J. With them <laughs> knuckles, Mr. J line. <laughs> Make sure you like, you subscribe, and share to this channel. Peace out. Peace. So if you had to marry, kill, or shag. Marry, kill, or what? Shag. Have, shag. have sex with. Oh, okay. Marry, kill, or shag. Heavenly Quad of Mariah. <laughs> Mary Kill or, or Shag, yes. Which one? You mean which one would I do what to? Okay, which one would you marry? Which one would you kill? And which one would you have sex with? Mm. I would probably Shag Quad because I. Okay, that I would, body? Because, I, yeah, her body is yeah, banging. Right. And and, and because Quad was one of the people that helped me get my sexy back. Okay, I, okay. So you and were shag so, Quad. Right. And so as far as as far as killing someone, you know. Girl, let's just throw heavy on off the, the uh, <laughs> to the into the river, girl. But see, but that's the thing. With some like, with some dental equipment strapped to her legs. You know,